Back in the day, Rare were pioneering game developers who led the way in game design for many years. No matter what genre they tackled, they seemed to be able to almost completely master it, creating games that oozed a genuine charm and personality and were an absolute joy to play. However, after being acquired by Microsoft in 2002 and a frankly disastrous Banjo-Kazooie sequel, Rare's reputation was in tatters and no amount of Xbox avatars with golden lancers or hashtag save Carmine t-shirts could fix it. It almost seemed like the good ship Rare, whose adventures on the gaming seas we all grew up with and knew fondly, was long gone. And in its place was a raft of the same name, manned by a bunch of drunken pirates with former Xbox executive Don Matrick's stupid face who were barely able to keep the whole thing from sinking. From this perspective, it's ironic that the game that might very well restore Rare's reputation as a game development force to be reckoned with is a game about being a pirate. Sea of Thieves was announced for PC and Xbox One back in 2015 at the Microsoft E3 conference. You know, the conference where they announced that HoloLens project that we actually have yet to see anything decent from still. At E3 2016, they showed the game being played by a bunch of quote-unquote gamers in a super scripted sequence that clearly was done to market the game towards Twitch streamers, and gave my cringe reflex such a workout I can now successfully clench my face into a fist. After this, my interest in the game needless to say was at an all-time low, and it wasn't even on my radar of must-buys. But three years later and after playing a closed beta test with some friends, I can safely say that Sea of Thieves is actually shaping up to be one of the most unique and more enjoyable multiplayer experiences of the year. The main objective of the game is simple enough. You buy maps to lead you to treasure and then set sail either solo or with a crew to an island to find it before anyone else does. Of course, every seafaring pirate needs a ship to call their own and thankfully navigating the sea is easy enough for players to grasp but not so easy that it takes away all the fun and challenge that comes with treasure hunting. Once you have the treasure chest, you can then take it back to your ship and then sail over to an outpost to cash it in for gold, which you then use to buy supplies, new weapons, clothing, and more importantly, more treasure maps. It's a simple enough premise that gives the player an incentive to want to go out and explore the surroundings rather than just doing it for the sheer hell of it or because the game is forcing them to do so. Aside from this, the player is free to explore the world at their own pace, with various islands, forts, and sunken wrecks to be discovered and explored for bonus treasure chests as well as happening upon floating caches of supplies to refill your own. The biggest draw to this game is that there are other ships sailing out there searching for treasure as well, and the player can either choose to engage them in combat or just leave them alone to passively sail past them and avoid combat altogether. It's a brilliant risk versus reward system that can often pay off should you succeed in taking out the other ship and board it to find a whole cache of treasure to add to your own. However, the obvious downside is that other players can do the exact same thing to you as well, meaning that you and your crew have to work together effectively if you want to fight back and keep your booty from being plundered. <laughs> Booty. Sailing a ship in this game is not as easy as simply standing at the helm and driving it like you would do in a boat in Grand Theft Auto 5 and requires a lot more work than you actually think. Attacking another player means having to manage returning fire on the cannons, reloading the cannons, as well as having someone steering your ship and managing your sails at the same time. Then when close enough you can hop aboard the enemy ship to loot all of its supplies to add to your own, or if you've sunk the ship already, you can dive in and search the area before it sinks right down to the ocean depths. Each aspect of the ship has to be taken into account, from dropping the the anchor right down to the angle that you need to point the sail in order to catch the wind. If you're sailing with a full crew, it can often be hilarious and chaotic to try and coordinate everyone to perform several tasks at once efficiently. This chaos and unpredictability is where the game really starts to shine and is at its best, and because every ship is player controlled, each encounter feels totally unique. It takes real teamwork and good communication to be able to pull all of this off, and when it all comes together and you emerge victorious, it really gives you a tremendous sense of pride and accomplishment. A sentiment that according to EA could only be achieved by a soulless and shameful pay-to-win progression system. It's this constant juggling act that becomes the main focus of the game, and it's nice to see that Rare have opted to make a game of this level of immersion, but also make it a really easy to pick up and play experience without compromising player enjoyability, which could have easily backfired on them had it not been handled correctly. The combat system in this game is also really easy to learn and master. You have a selection of weapons to choose from that range from swords to guns, but can only carry two weapons at once. This means that the player has to adjust their loadouts to each situation and are encouraged to experiment with each weapon combination to find out what is best. Personally, I found the best combination to be the blunderbuss and the cutlass, as most combat situations tended to be mid to close range, and I found that the sniper rifle and the pistol to be nowhere near as good. Sea of Thieves is also a really beautiful looking game, to a point where you could easily sit back and sail around, not doing anything but taking in the environment and still be entertained. I have to say I haven't seen a sea look this good since The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and you can tell this was definitely something that they worked really hard to get right. Had there been any inconsistency in the way the ocean looked, it likely would have 
have brought the whole experience crashing down, but I'm happy to say that they've nailed both the look and the feel of this completely. Storms are an especially great highlight and act as a way to test the player's sailing and multitasking skills whilst under pressure. Waves get bigger and have a more threatening appearance, and your compass spins around erratically, and on top of that you have to contend with lightning storms that strike your ship and can cause it to take on water unless you fix it. If you fall off your ship and end up stranded somewhere, a merman will appear in the water and allow you to instantly teleport to your ship. Or if you end up dying, your character is teleported to a ghost ship complete with a ghost captain, taking you to Davy Jones' locker. It's also a game that seems to have recaptured the trademark rare charm by having NPCs and environments oozing with character and personality. Being able to do something as small as talking to a tavern wench to ask about their day do a lot more to make the world you inhabit a much more engrossing place. But it's also what you can do as a pirate that really sells the experience further. Playing a sea shanty on an instrument, firing yourself from a cannon, getting drunk on the ship's grog stash, or even designating yourself captain and locking an unruly crew member in the ship's brig are just some of the many ways that Sea of Thieves lets you live the life of a real swashbuckling pirate. You can clearly tell that they've put a lot of thought and passion into this project just by looking at the level of detail that they've packed into each aspect of the game. For example, you can get your pirate so drunk that he starts to vomit. This is gross and funny enough already, but then you're able to add a bucket to the mix which allows you to catch your own vomit and then throw it all over your teammate's face, instantly covering him with a disgusting green goop and block his vision. Sure, it's a disgusting example, but it's a brilliant demonstration of the level of freedom the player is given to make up their own fun. And this freedom to do whatever you want is very much the embodiment of the pirate's life. It's a level of roleplay rarely seen in this day and age, no pun intended, and considering that a majority of the industry's focus is shifting to a frankly insulting level of games as service business models, it's an amazing breath of fresh air to have something so clearly focused on the player experience, something that Nintendo are continuing to do quite successfully. That's not to say that I don't have some concerns, however, as this is definitely a game whose enjoyability and success hinges on how long the game can hold the player's interest before fatigue sets in. While this is a really fun game to play with friends, it remains to be seen how varied the missions will become and how often different quests will be given to the player. Even though this beta was just a small taster of what the full game has to offer, it would be really disappointing if the game turned out to be just a bunch of fetch quests set to jaunty music. We know that there were going to be monsters like the Kraken to hunt down and kill, as well as a plan to keep a steady stream of content coming for players to enjoy, but it remains to be seen just how long the charm of this game and the drive to hunt for treasure will keep people playing. After playing the beta and being impressed by just how good the game was, I really hope to see that Rare find success in this, as much like the Kraken, they've laid dormant for too long and need to be released. But they could easily scupper the whole thing if they're not careful, especially when you consider that they're including microtransactions that have the potential to become a detriment to the player experience, even if it's just for cosmetics. For example, I'd hate to have spent hours looting and plundering treasure to unlock a unique outfit to only then find several other players have bought the same outfit for actual money, and the most effort that they've put in was convincing their parents to let them buy it. Overall though, I'm cautiously excited for Sea of Thieves, and I hope that the developers have crafted a game that will be a rare gem and not a sunken wreck. So here's hoping it's the former and not the latter. Thank you very much for watching this impressions video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it, enough to give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe and check out my other reviews too. Special thank you again to my three Patreons, Sarah of War, Lord Drago, and the Stone Man 2013 I really can't thank you guys enough for your support and generosity, thank you so much. If any of you guys have played the beta as well, I'd love to hear what you thought about the game. Do you agree with what I said, or do you have your own concerns that I may not have mentioned, because I'd like to hear about them in the comments section? Let me know, okay? Anyways, that's all from me guys, and I'll see you on the next video.